Rob and Slim Show. Hey, Rob. Steven. How's it going, man? Good. How you doing, Stephen David Lampley? Oh, I'm doing do, been doing well, man. Been doing well. Busy as crap. But, you yeah, know, I saw crazy. that. You are quite the celebrity nowadays. <laughs> well, I don't know about the celebrity part. I know I'm busy as hell. <laughs> I don't know about the celebrity part. But I appreciate Yeah, I've been, I've been staying busy, but that's okay, I guess. Yes, that is. That's the best thing to be. I saw you have a radio show uh, coming out. It's going to be daily, right? It is. It, uh, we, of course, we started out with the uh, with the uh, what ten minute a week thing, and uh, we we had so uh, my producer said we had so many listeners and so many kind comments. He said, "Man, it's time. Let's let's go on with the uh, let's go on with the Monday through Friday show." So wow. we're, we're doing that starting next Monday. And that's gonna is that called Unsolved? What is that show? No, it's uh, it's crime and forensics with, and of course, my name's there. It's uh, crime and forensics. And it'll be on uh, several radio stations across the country, and we're going to be on uh, iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes, TuneIn, all that, of course. Nice. Oh, and that's going to be uh, mostly about unsolved uh, missing persons, crimes, and uh, and murders, and all that. But- well, no, well, it's going to be a little bit about of, of, of everything, and uh, part of the show will be uh, we're going to take one case, one unsolved homicide or suspicious missing person somewhere in the country, and we're going to cover that uh, as part of the show. It'll be the last part of the show. Okay. And hopes that maybe somebody out there will hear it, and, you know, you never know. Yeah. You really never know who might have some information and, and might be able to provide that information and maybe solve a case somewhere along the way. Awesome. That is super cool, super cool. I have a confession, Stephen. I don't know if you ever background checked me, but I had a, I'd been given a name in prison. I got arrested once, and uh, I, I was dubbed the Cookie Monster. I threw a cookie <laughs> at my ex-wife, and she called the cops. She called the cops. The cookie hit her, and they called me the Cookie Monster. <laughs> That's amazing. That's hilarious. <laughs> I know you told me the story, but you never told me that part of it. I, and I, I did. I was great. like, okay, well, all right. I'm going to set the stage here. I'm driving down there to get the boys. It's bumper-to-bumper traffic. My sons live like four hours away. And, yeah, we, it took a while because it was like a holiday weekend. And previously, she asked me to bring her a cookie from Wawa. They have, like sugar cookies and all that so she wanted the wawa sugar cookie because they don't have wawa down there right and uh when i got there she was so pissed that i was like an hour late that she was just she was being uh really sour and i just flung the cookie at her (laughs) and it hit her in the face and she called the cops and (laughs) i did a night man you know what I've heard of all kinds of weapons before, but that's the first. <laughs> <laughs> Cookie monster. The, the that's judge, hysterical. The, the, the bail was set really high, and all we could figure was because I was from out of state. Wow. Like my bail bondsman, when I walked in there from being, my dad bailed me out, and my bail bonds is like, so you're the cookie monster. <laughs> <laughs> man, 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 maybe, maybe if it had been a marshmallow cream, man, she might not have put you in jail, you know? Might have been a little softer. Yeah. I wonder if that cop brags, like, he's like, I took the cookie monster. <laughs> I took the cookie monster down. <laughs> like, what did he do? Oh, it's a terrible thing. Yeah. He, was, he was a beast, that cookie monster. He used to just waste Girl Scout <laughs> cookies, just not finish an entire sleeve like a real piece of shit. <laughs> just whip some that Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Didn't like Samoas. I change the name of the radio show, you know, I'm on the Cookie Monster and Slim. <laughs> well, I, I hope you didn't do any background checks on me because I was arrested once too. Were you... Yeah, when I was when when I was uh, twelve years old, my uh, my stepbrothers convinced me to go smashing pumpkins with them, oh, and um, a band called and we and, 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 and we went and we went to this we went to this one house and we smashed the pumpkins right of course like right up against their house so they could hear and then decided that they had these bikes that they were throwing out but like one of the bikes was like tied down so we spent like twenty minutes <laughs> trying <laughs> trying to get the bikes out and. And, and and the people who owned the house had came out after 20 minutes because they heard us smash the pumpkin. And uh, my brothers wanted to run, but I was kind of a pussy, and I just started crying. And so so the cops showed up and threw us in a cop car. And the, uh, the people's pumpkin who we smashed, they told me, you know, you're going to grow up one day, and you're going to look back on this, and you're going to say, those people saved me. Did they? No, no, they absolutely did not. But, so hopefully you didn't uncover that. 
Cookie Monster and the Smashing Pumpkin. He <laughs> we got caught drinking out in the woods. I forgot about Did that. Yeah, yeah we were one of the woods and guys. Slambo saved us. Yeah, we we yeah. were. My well, actually, me and Slambo were both twenty one, and we were hanging out with a bunch of like nineteen and eighteen year olds. Yeah, there was. And we <laughs> we we bought him. We were bought. We bought him alcohol, and we were fucking wasted <laughs> at a campsite, <laughs> and nobody. Nobody, this, nobody had the, the idea to clean my, up. My father was the state was he was the chief of uh, park police at this place. <laughs> yeah, so, it, so so this this story is great because like we all go to bed and just leave the campsite yeah. a fucking mess. Oh and so I I was the first to wake up and I walk and I notice like everything's a mess, but I'm like yeah. whatever, and he like just I don't didn't care. Do anything. He I just, just didn't do anything. I just like kind of walked around and then I see a ranger pull up and I'm like this is cool, we're fucked. Yeah, and uh, so they all show up wow. and Pete like I, we all give them our license and they go oh you're Peter like they saw his name here, they, and they're like we yeah. come here like we know your father because his father was, used to be a state yeah, park ranger yeah he was ranger. the chief yeah. of that 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 park oh, that we were staying yeah. and and the the cop knew my dad he cut he pulls me to the side and he just reams me out oh. like everybody Wait, what's, what state park was it it was uh wharton wharton state wharton park, state state park, state park yeah. Yeah. but so yeah. slambo actually saved us all because we probably would be oh, like I was our lives would have been ruined you, but gave slambo a break <laughs> no they, <laughs> they give us all a break they dump the beer and like my one buddy had like this cheap japanese beer he's like you know what you just dump that that belongs in the river <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> I was gonna say too. I know um, one of my buddies in like right out of high school. He was in uh, New York. He used to, I guess, run weed, and a cop pulled him over, oh, man. and that was it. The cop just took the weed and he said, "Get the fuck out of New York. This is your Christmas present." That's amazing. That's yeah. Cool. I was detained by a uh, secret service uh, when I was uh, when I was a fucking nineteen. Yeah, my friend and I went to protest. Uh, I think it was Bush's like second election, <laughs> and uh, and we were like we were like freshmen in college, and it was October, and it was like I don't know he was coming home or whatever, and I was like yeah let's fucking go to uh, the Rotaco Center. And fucking, you know, I think his daughters were showing us. Let's go do it. And in a, in a predominantly Republican county, we went. We're the only two protesters. We went with signs, <laughs> and then we managed to get in. And then they, we fucking uh, shouted something or whatever. And then Secret <laughs> Service came and detained us wow. for the rest of the thing. Yeah, man. And they were like, "You're gonna be on a list." And we were like, "What fucking <laughs> list?" <laughs> like, and nothing ever happened. But for like a couple days, but it was great because we couldn't. Like his parents never found out. Like to this day, they don't fucking know because they were really strict. My mom didn't give a shit. My mom texted me. She's like, hey, how's the rally going? Because I fucking told her we were going to a rally. And I was like, yeah, we've been detained by Secret Service. And she just texts me back and goes, why? <laughs> was like, oh, God. I'm like, ah, we're fine. And then uh, the next day, though, my uh, my mom was like, like pounding on my door. I'm like, what's up? And she's like, you're in the paper. And I was like, fuck. And I had to call my buddy to like tell him to go downstairs before his parents saw. So he's like, I got my paper and I got all the neighbor's papers. And he's like, you got to drive me back to school. So I fucking beat it over to his house. And the car was like filled with the Blocks newspaper. <laughs> no one fucking got their paper that day. It was hilarious. He put it, it was so fucking good. Man. That's great. It was great, yeah. Good story. There's a picture of us being cuffed and escorted out of the goddamn building. I want that. I want that. That hung up in, in, I know, right? in the studio. Stephen, I want to ask you too. Oh, how, yeah. how was CrimeCon? Uh, go ahead, man. I was going to ask you how CrimeCon was. CrimeCon. Well, man, it was great. It was the first time, of course, I'd ever been there, and it, uh, uh, you know, I, I told Kevin Boff, the, the guy, one of the guys, one of the partners with Red Seat Ventures out of New York City. I said, you know, I, I'll be honest with you, man. I said I, I expected about seventy-five folks. You know, really. Yeah. Uh, and then. Uh, I found out I could go online before about a week before it started and see how many people had registered. I thought, oh, cool, that's cool. Well, I fell out of my chair, man. I had 300 and something, 340 and something people had registered. I thought, that's crazy. That's, yeah, that's insane. Yeah. And uh, I left out Friday morning to go up to head up to Nashville for CrimeCon. There was 577 people that had signed up at that time. Uh, and I get up there and Saturday, I get there Friday and Saturday, of course, is my time to speak. And I, I, I let the lady know, hey, I'm here, you know, while I get ready for wiring the mic and all that. And, uh, go into the room and uh, they get me all wired up and she leaves and she comes back in a little bit. She says, Mr. Lampley, do you know how many people are in this room? I said, no, and I, I really don't. You know, I sort of looked around and said, well, when I left, it was 577. And she had this little snicker sort of like, <laughs> no. There's 850 people in the standing room only. 
Holy and I, I guess I looked like maybe peek it. <laughs> and she said, are you okay? <laughs> so <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I just wasn't expecting you to say that. But it went yeah. well. It went well. Cool. Had a lot of great people up there. Is that where you met uh, Nancy Grace? Well, she and I had talked previously on, on a radio show. Uh, she was on uh, House of Mystery where my producer uh, – produces a show called uh called the house of mystery on something weird uh, media and she and i had been on the show together and spoken briefly it's the first time she and i had ever met though wow. is she i mean I don't, are you guys close <laughs> yeah we're, we're pretty i mean we we we're, she's uh i've been on her show once already and supposed to go back oh, okay. on her show again oh good and then she's going to be on my show sometime maybe next week or so so she seems delightful <laughs> uh <laughs> I got a question for you. No, I was I was just, I was gonna ask if she was as bad shit insane as she seems on TV. But she seems she seems like a sweet person in real life. Uh, I'm totally lying. Uh, I'm sorry. No, I'm just fucking around. Uh, she seems great. She's okay. So do people uh, like her? There you go. I'm sorry. Do people like her? Do they take to her? Or do they people, think well, her some people don't. I mean, uh, but she seems uh, she seems real nice. She's a nice lady. She was nice to me. Those, uh-huh. uh, of course, criminals probably have a different outlook on her. Uh-huh. Uh, she, she's all about truth, justice, and what's right. But uh, mm. and she's very outspoken, which is not, not a problem as far as I'm concerned. So she wouldn't. I can be. I'm not. Huh? She, she she wouldn't like us then because I smashed pumpkins and robbed her a cookie at somebody. Yeah, <laughs> she gets accused a lot of um on on her show. I remember what I've watched and what I remember of of kind of sensationalizing uh certain stories in uh, you know for a show. Like, is that do you think that's a something that you would you know tend to agree with just because of the nature of TV, or do you think that's her personality in general? Well, that's, that's her personality. That's who she. That's who Nancy is. Uh, mm. Of course, she, if, if you know her story, I don't know if you're you're familiar with how she actually got into yeah uh, crime and all uh, the crime fighting part. But she she was engaged to a gentleman uh, back many years ago, and I don't remember all the details of it. But he ended up being being murdered on, on a job site. And that was her fiance. Right. And wow. uh, that just completely changed. I think she was going to major in education at the time. Yeah, that'll do and it. And that yeah. just that just completely changed her whole life. And she decided she wanted to you know start helping people who had you know problems as far as crime. Do you uh, did you ever? I have to ask this question because we were just talking about it. Did you watch Evil Genius on Netflix? Have you heard about the Marjorie Deal Armstrong, that woman? I have not seen that. No, I have not. Did you know about the case in 2003, the the bombing and stuff? And what they were like? Uh, I know a little bit about it. Okay. Uh, I was going to ask what your opinion of it on it was. Because it was, it was, I mean, it was crazy. It was the craziest thing I've ever fucking seen. What What was it about? Uh, um, it was about the bombing and t- the the uh, the height, the bank heist, to do with the collar that, that we were talking about. The uh, he put a bo- somebody put took a this guy and put a bomb collar on him like a collar that had a bomb attached to it and yeah. told him you got to yeah. rob a bank. Wow. And, and like, like on yeah, like there's footage he, of his I head exploding. That he blew, that he well, blew up. But uh, yeah, I mean I didn't uh, I didn't I don't know all the details around it or all. Oh okay, you should it's 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 insane. But it's the thing that I like found it. interesting was is that they were saying that the um the FBI and and the troopers and local cops don't tend to work together well. So like there was information yeah, I've heard that, was, that. Is that is that something that like do you find that to be true? It depends. Now, uh there, there are there are cases where you have different municipalities that, uh, for one reason or another, don't really particularly work well together. Uh, but it's been, and in my experience, now when when I started in Birmingham Police Department, when I was first assigned to a regular beat, the County Sheriff's Department up in or the Center Point area of Birmingham, and the officers that worked, some of the officers, not all of them, that worked the upper end of Birmingham, didn't see eye to eye on a lot of things. Right. So when, when my my new partner and I took over the beat, our first stop, our, literally our first stop, was into the sheriff's department to make amends. Oh, nice. You know, so, hey, we're, you know, so so we we had a very good working relationship while I was there. So That's great. It happens though. Yeah, yeah that is cool. I was going to ask you too, um, Stephen. How did your uh, Dahmer book? How was that doing? Is that out yet? It, it is not, and to be honest, I've had to put it on. I've got there's so much going on. I've had to pretty much put it on the back burner for I, now. I was wondering because uh, when I was I, doing show prep, I was having a hard time like finding it. Yeah, yeah well, there's a reason for that. Wow. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. I, I've had to put it, and I was writing a fiction book called Two Days, a, a psychological thriller. Both of those have pretty much been on the back burner for a while until I can get. Uh, 
course, this radio show has taken a lot out of me as far as time. But once once we get the, the fires put out and the dust settles, I'll be back on both of those. Cool, cool. Yeah, because I know when we talked to you last time, we talked about the... Uh, the Dahmer book. So I, I like yeah. I, I was expecting it to be out and yeah, I had a hard time, so I didn't know if you had trouble putting it out or if it just got delayed. No, it's just delayed. It's, like, yeah, I just don't have you know, uh, had to pick and choose, you know. So yeah. I had to put those both on back burner. So ho- hopefully by the end of summer, maybe first of all, I'll have those out. Cool, cool. I wanna ask you too, Stephen, I don't know if you saw, um it was Memorial Day weekend. Um, around here, it was Wildwood. Uh, some cops, some cops beat a woman. Uh, what's your stance on um, police brutality? Because the woman had hit the cops, but the cop, I, I, I felt like overreacted. Like he was punching the woman in the face. Like it was like, wow. Like really, did it have to go there? No, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. Right well, now. You know, that that, ha- that happens, and I, I'll be honest. I work with good cops. I work with bad cops. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have refused to work with some. Wow, just that's good. That, uh, I just won't work with him. I won't work with her. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, ninety-nine and whatever the decimal is, the cops are, are on the level. They're they're good folks. Yeah. Uh, but you have you have one every once in a while that goes off, you know, on some tangent and does stuff that they shouldn't do, and then of course that's that's wrong. There's there's no excuse for that. There's no reasoning. There's no rationale. It's wrong. Period. And of course, they have to face the face whatever you know happens to them. I think their uniforms uh, are too tight. They're very angry. <laughs> it seems like they're uncomfortable. I found personally, like in just my general uh, whatever, um, that state troopers have been cooler to deal with. Yeah, than state town cops. troopers. I've always a lot never of times had any yeah. problems with the town state cops is, are bored. They're yeah, bored, man. there's nothing going on. You know. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, they're dealing out traffic tickets to fucking senior citizens and shit, you know? Uh, yeah, I agree. I had um, uh, one one story, too. Um, We were in, we were just going to college, me and my buddies from high school, and we got pulled over. My buddy Danny wanted to see how fast his car would go, and he was doing, like, <laughs> almost 90 on the turnpike. And uh, the lights went on. We got pulled over. My buddy Tom's freaking out because Tommy's got something on him that he shouldn't have. Mm. And the cop comes up, and my buddy Danny was the uh, son of the mayor of the town we were from. So he had to he had to put that out there. And the cop's like, I don't care who your dad is. You're not doing 90 on my turnpike and killing you and somebody else. Like, you're losing your license, you piece of shit. And so Danny starts crying. Yeah. Cop's like, I'll be right back. I'm going to run. I'm going to I'm gonna write all this up. You're losing your license for like a year. So the cop comes back. Danny's crying. The cop's still yelling at Danny. And finally the cop's like, look, I'm just fucking with you. And he throws his license back at him. He says, I had 20 minutes left of my shift. And I just wanted I wanted to fuck with somebody. <laughs> don't you don't you drive over the speed limit again. Just go where you're going. And Danny's like, All right, thank you, Danny. Just so so thankful. And then the cop the cop got on his bullhorn and said, Somebody get Danny a tissue and he dropped and he <laughs> drove amazing. away. That's like that amazing. was that's what I'm saying. Like that was a state trooper. That was yeah. really cool. Really cool. <laughs> What's disturbing is the amount of people that thought that girl should have gotten punched in the like you know they're like yeah, oh there's people that think she should have been oh there's people that think that the cop was totally in the right to fucking punch her like here's the thing though no. like, there's there's people at every job that you wish would get punched in the face you just don't fucking do it yeah no. you know what I mean? yes and like you know that's I just saw, it I saw her yeah no she was no peach she no was, she wasn't she was no but you're, it's no, like but here's what I don't understand but... like you're on you're on a fucking beach you know yeah. what I mean and she didn't even like she like basically like she didn't well, even she didn't even she wasn't drunk and she only had like a can of what some kind of like margarita fucking and alcohol they i think we're just gonna let her off just just stop doing it just stop drinking they should have done that and then he antagonized uh, the shit out of her. yeah the, basically the only thing she got charged with is trying to have a good time at the jersey shore like that's basically it that's like how problem. dare you try to enjoy yourself on these shit beaches <laughs> i'm surprised anyone wants to come here mm-hmm. that's that always surprises people me. love coming here though. i know it's they insane. do like yeah. yeah she wasn't even from around here <laughs> Yeah, but that guy, man, that fight fucking wailed on her. Steven, what, um... Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead, man, go ahead. I was going to ask, what, um, besides the show, what else do you have coming up? Well, that's a, that's, that's pretty much it, man. I got got the show, and uh, I've been talking with some folks over in the United Kingdom, and uh, just a little bit ago, they've invited me to come over to uh, their version of CrimeCon. 
Okay. Uh, their first ever version over in the UK, and I, I may be going over there for that. We'll see how that works out. I got a couple of book signings coming up in Seattle, but that's like in September. So that's that's a, that's a ways away. Cool, cool. And crime con, that's like a true crime. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, because uh, earlier Slim and uh, John, I think, asked what crime con was. Yeah, yeah. It's I like a it true crime festival, like. Okay. Yeah. Convention. So like, who goes to I guess different like true crime podcasts and. Anybody trying to get it? Yeah, they have uh, they have authors. what they call Podcast Row, uh, which is nothing but podcasters. Yeah, uh, set up and uh, some of them do live remotes from the from the uh, Crime Con, and then there's speakers uh, starting with Friday. I think actually my, most of the speakers are, are Saturday, and into Sunday. You know, I was speaking the Saturday. Uh, on, on different topics. I mean, this year they had the crew from Dateline. They had uh, Jim Clemente from Criminal Minds and Quantico. Uh, uh, well, Carl, uh, Carl Marino from the uh, Homicide Hunter series. Oh, they, yeah. they have some big name folks there usually. Speaking. I was going to say too, some of these people like, um, what was it, Patton Oswald's late wife. Yeah. She helped, uh, I guess, nab the East Area Rapist. Yeah. Um, writer at yeah. Golden she, Gate, was it? She read the book. Um, yeah, there was a book that, um, yeah, his wife, what did she die of? Cancer? No. Or something? No, or? she actually accidentally OD'd. Oh, and it was on did? like sleep medication, like so, like it was it was you know oh, she just, just like an a, an a, a complete he, action. She was oh. just stressed and like overworked and stuff from doing the thing, and she wound up um, I guess taking too too much of whatever the hell it was. Didn't realize it and like oh. fell asleep, and that was it. Jeez, because yeah, she was putting out a book on the East Area, area Rapist, and it led to his apprehension. Mm -hmm. Like so, that's what I was gonna say. Like some of these true crime podcasters or yeah. whatever they they actually do help solve things That's awesome. it's crazy them. yeah they do yeah uh, they, they do and then mm -hmm. the people there as well there were, there were a little over 3,000 people that attended this year which was double last year uh, what they had and the, the people that, that attend these are knowledgeable they're, they're very they're very uh, knowledgeable individuals and have uh, actually helped a lot in the solving of a lot of cases yeah. So it's it's not just a fun event to go to. It actually does some good. It, yeah. It, it, it kind of happened with the evil genius thing too. I think it was. Yeah. I hate to say it, but I think it was fucking That's... Geraldo in like 2005 who went down and had a guy. <laughs> it was. I hate. I, I I hate to fucking admit it. Geraldo. That goofy mustachioed bastard. Yeah. Um, but he went down to uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, with a crew, <laughs> and like you know, it never got solved. Yeah. He was the one that like connected he Margie to Armstrong and the other guy to to that. Yeah, yeah. he did. Wow. It, and that was what that was when the that was when the two organizations realized they weren't actually communicating with each other and they fucking missed evidence or something like that wow yeah so it's you know good for Geraldo yeah <laughs> how long has the uh, true cr crime con been around for uh, this is their, this was their second year they'll have the their third crime con 2019 crime con will be in uh, uh, New Orleans this next year so y'all welcome to come down man awesome oh, cool. Steven uh, Steven we have to wrap this up dude but where can everybody find you Oh, I don't know, man. I'm I'm, I'm like a stealth mode. I don't know. Uh, oh, they, wow. <laughs> that's fine. He, they can find you know, me on my it's, it's better if you know where we are. <laughs> he probably does. Yeah, man. I'm, 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 I'm hidden, man. I can't let you know that. You that's know? fair enough. Uh, right. No, it's www.stephendavidlampley.com. That's the cool. stephendavidlampley.com. They can find me there. How awesome. do you drop off the map in this day and age? That'd be great. Is not that, that I, Not possible? that I need to, but... How do I fake it that? Yeah. <laughs> We've come a long way from throwing a dummy off of a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't. Uh, hey, man, look, look, y'all know where to find me, but after hearing your stories, you know, I need to know where to find I need to know where y'all are, man. I need to know where y'all are, man. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> Have a good one, Steven. Uh, Take care, man. All right, you too. All right. Cat, why are you yelling at me? The cat's angrily. <laughs> just like a lion. You guys have a goat? <laughs> I didn't know. The cat is so fat. He, he's so fat. He's just like laying down on his side and like arching his head over and yeah. screaming. <laughs> he, pretty, he had some what questions to ask. He was like, <laughs> he also watched Evil How Genius. How do I lose this weight? We should ask every guest about Evil Genius and get their input on it. I feel like that's what I've almost done. I feel a little bad. Did you guys see Evil Genius? Dude, I'm going to have to oh, go home really and good. watch it's, that. It's now. really good. Yeah. It's four yes. episodes, and you will blow through it. It's fucking yeah. crazy. Dude, my, my uncle actually was telling me about that. I just, I, yeah. I haven't gotten around to it yet. It's it's the closest I've ever seen to any, like, just the most fucked up shit, man. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going on break. We'll be back. <laughs>